Hello and welcome to another video from me, Rough Swordsman Wargamer. It's part five of a playthrough of The Doolittle Raid by Jeremy White and published by GMT Games. In this final video, we're looking at finishing off the planning stage. And this time it's going to be March and April. Here we are in April, and this is where the crew are trained, and here are all the training that we can do. First thing to remember though is bring Doolittle down from February, and he's going to go in this little square here, and it says if Lieutenant Colonel Doolittle is present, morale will increase by one. We'll talk about that in a moment, but here's the morale track. First thing we're going to decide is which training site we are going to use. We've got a choice of two here, McKellen Field in California or Eglin Field in Florida. Different advantages to both. Here you can see red dice, and those dice are the security dice you're gonna throw to try and beat the security risk. Now, if you remember from some of the last videos, as the security risk increases, it gets harder and harder to equal or beat that security risk. So the more dice you have to throw, the better. So I think we will choose Eglin Field and get two extra security dice. And we place this on here. On the other side, it says Liberty gained and it pushes up the morale by one to the right. That means we've given all the crew a bit of R&R uh, &R, and that's boosted their morale. I think we'll use that. The problem is, if you do things like this, pluses and minuses, it will increase the uh, security risk in April, but let's give them some R&R. &R. Talking about morale, here's the counter for the track and it will start here. And on the other side of this one is another opportunity to increase the morale of the team by briefing them, telling them that they're going to bomb uh, sites in Japan. <laughs> However, this one does have very bad adverse modifications to the um, security risk in April. So I think we'll leave that and we'll pop it in the start box, but now, because Doolittle's here, it can go up one, and because of this liberty gained, it goes up another one, so we're at 10. Also, make sure there are no, up the top in February, no morale adjustments from your modifications, but no, we uh, didn't have any. Next, we decide which security measures we are going to use, and these, once again, will increase those uh, security dice, the security value, the amount of dice we throw to beat that security risk. First one is quarantine, and that places the training site under quarantine, uh, and it will add two more dice to the secrecy value, the amount of dice we throw. So yeah, we might as well use that, and they go there. Next is FBI. The FBI are watching your every move. You're under scrutiny. That will, of course, lower morale, but will give you another secrecy die to throw. And as I say, you'll play this differently, but I think that those dice are very important to uh, keep passing those security risk checks. So yes, we'll do that, but it will lower morale by one. Next is extra MPs to keep an eye on everyone. That will add another die, but will again lower morale. So I think we'll do that. We're down to seven training points now. And the last one is no wives. What do you reckon? <laughs> no, I can't be that cruel. So we'll leave that one. That means at the moment we have two, three, four, five, six dice to throw to try and pass 
a security check. Right, next we'll do the training. So we'll look and see where this morale is finished up. And it's finished up at seven. So we have seven training points. And this number here, which is a number nine, if you can't see it, means the amount of elite crewmen we'll be able to get from the training. And once again, don't forget to check in February to see if any modifications added to training points. And looking up there, we've got one for improving the top turret and one for improving the ventral turret. So we have nine training points. Before we do that, we're gonna pick our elite crewman, nine. And if you remember, these are the crewmen that go on to the B-25s and each one has a special ability. Doolittle has a use once, re-roll. Now we can pick those ourselves, as I say in our case, nine, or we can draw them randomly. Well, I wanna make sure I have Doolittle, so what I'll do is I'll pick Doolittle, and then I'll randomly draw the other eight. As I say, when you play this, you can do as you wish, draw them all randomly or pick them all. So, eight more. There we go. And these are put to one side to be placed on the uh, B25s in April. So, training. Here, as I said earlier, are the types of training the crew are going to be conducting. And to start us off, we pop one of these on every start square. There we are. Now, nine training points. First is bombing. And as you can see, if we use one training point, we can get a plus one to our bombing when we're over the targets. So we'll do that. Night flying. Well, you never know because if the naval turn and flight turn don't go as planned, we may end up getting over Japan at night time. So we may need some night flying training. So we'll move one of these up. That's two. Daylight navigation. We'll have one of those. That gives us a plus one. Hedge hopping. Flying at low altitude. And this one is to do with evasion. Remember the hazards we can remove from our B-25s. At the moment is zero. So we'll use one training point to get one evasion. That's four. Gunnery, not so sure. We have at the moment four gunnery dice. And to increase it to another die would be two training points. Not sure, because we need at least one for this. This is an important one, short takeoff. And this will determine how many B-25s we can actually get onto the carrier deck and whether or not during training any are destroyed <laughs> crashed or damaged. So we need to pay one to roll two dice and that value determines how many crash and or damaged. And here it will tell you the length of the carrier deck and that will determine how many aircraft we can get on it. If we pay an extra training point, we can roll a third die after rolling the two and taking the result into account, then we can roll another die and try and push the counter up a bit further. So we need two for that. So we've got one, two, three, four. We'll move this one up another one. So we have to pay another two training points. And I want two for this. But what we can do on the back of these counters, it says extra training. Hope you can see that. That means we can bump it up for free to there. 
And because of that, we can draw an extra elite crewman, but pluses and minuses. When we come to do our first secrecy test in April, the amount of extra training is taken into account. So I've just used the one. So that's uh, one, two, three, four, five. No, what am I saying? One, two, three, four, five, six, and then two here, eight. We've got one left and I can't spend it. So that'll do. Right, short takeoff. I'll just draw one of the elite crewmen for the extra training and we get D Jones. Right, I'll put him with the rest and now we'll do our short takeoff. So here we go. So as you can see, we need to get a nice high number. Oh, that's not bad at all. 10. Lovely. We are up here. 9 and 10. One of the B-25s is damaged. And at the moment, we can use 16 aircraft. And we have to put one of them on one of our B-25s. So we're using that extra training point to throw one more die. It's gonna be good anyway, because a one or a two. Six, so we're very lucky. We're up the top. That means we can put 20 aircraft onto the carrier deck. We've only got 18, so we can put the maximum amount. And only one of them was damaged. That's the training. Next would be diplomacy checks, but checking up there at January, there are no checks for March. So we have to look at the landing sites. So just like before, we can roll and try and get some more landing sites and then add ground crew to any that don't have them and fuel. I think though, we're gonna try and get at least one of these as I say, they're the nearest. So, for Lishu, we need to roll equal to or higher than the stockpile number, which if you remember from the last video is this number here. So we need eight or more. Oh, we've, I can't see. There we go, eight, we've done it. I don't think I'll bother with Chu Chow there. I think I'll save that for April in case one of these gets attacked. So that's that. We can put a ground crew on there. Remember only one per month. We could have put it on here. What should we do? No, let's put it on here. And eight fuel. So I think we'll put four here two here and two here. Event check. So let's see what we get. We've got a minus one because we've got three or more landing sites at the moment. That may all change. Here we go. Nine. Oop. Minus one is eight. We've only done it again, look. No event, that's March. Now it's time for the last month of the planning turn, April. So for April, the first thing we have to do is sort out rendezvous point, the planned rendezvous turn and the planned launch point. So I think for me, I'm going to use the suggestions that we had when we did the naval turn from the scenario. So we're gonna place the planned 
rendezvous point at Midway, the planned rendezvous turn on the 12th, 13th of April, and the launch point in Defence West. There we go. Now we place the submarines, and we have three. I've got to be out of contact first. Couple here. Because if we do contact the submarines, each one will give us a plus one for the rendezvous check. And the last one will place up here, like we did in the scenario for the naval turn. Put one here. And that, if it's in contact, will give us the possibility of contact markers and also a plus one to the target acquisition value. Now back up this end of the map, we have to do a transit check to see if any of the B-25 experienced any mishaps on their way to their embarkation point in San Francisco. But first, We'll move Doolittle down, because as you can see there, if he's present, he'll get a plus one modifier for this. So what we're going to do is roll two dice. We need as high as possible. And then we look on that table to see how many transit hazards we draw. But as you can see, there are some other modifiers. So we get a plus one for Doolittle, as I just said. Minus, see that's the other thing the extra training does, is to take off one for every extra training you did from the die roll. If we'd have chosen McLennan Field, we would have got a plus three, but we didn't. So let's see. So this is cancelled out by the extra training and we don't get that. So it's as is. So looking at this, we need to throw an eight or more to get just the one transit hazard. Seven. No, it's two. Two transit hazards. These are the transit hazards which we put into a cup. And we have to draw two of them, right. One. Two. Let's see what we get. Damage, another damage marker on another B25. And this one is, oh, damage as well. Could have been worse, I suppose. I'll show you some of the other hazards. But two more of these to go on. Two more of the B25s. So here's some of the others I think I talked about these two in the last video. But there's a plus one security risk. And this one, I think I got it a bit wrong because of the wording in the rules. Because we did that modification on the propellers and carburetors, it decreased the weight by one. I was saying because we did the modification, it would nullify that, wouldn't take effect. But no, it would nullify that modification. And if we had drawn that, we would have had to increase the guzzle check number of all B25s by one. You can't get rid of it, can't repair it. And if we hadn't had done the engine modification, we could have ignored it. Because we modified the carburetors to be a bit more frugal, a bit more leaner on the fuel, during transit, another team has come along seen the carburetors have been adjusted and adjusted them back to their factory settings. I think that's what it means. But luckily, no. So that's that. Okay, we've got the B25s safely to the port. A little bit of damage. Now they've got to be lifted onto the carrier deck. 
and we have to do a crane check. And here you can see the results. We're going to throw two dice. Here it's got a modifier of plus diligence. Now this is a number we can pick from 0 to 13, which we add to our die roll. That, of course, will decrease the amount of damage and possible transit hazards. We want to be in the range of 10 to 12 by the looks of it. And uh, any higher, we add to our security risk. So you think, OK, we'll add 13. Unfortunately, the diligence number you pick, you make a note of, and will be used when we do the delay check up here. And that diligence number, along with some other modifiers, are taken off the die roll. And if it gets to two or less, we are delayed in leaving port and delayed in rendezvousing with Nimitz. So we've got to be a bit sensible. Now, once again, it's up to you, isn't it? What number you're going to choose. Some people choose zero, but it does mean we need to throw high to get nothing at all. Let's add two. So I'm making a note of that so I don't forget it. We're going to add two to the die roll and see how we do. The diligence, of course, means you're being far more careful putting the planes on the carrier deck, but of course that takes more time and that might delay you. So that's what you've got to think about. So here we go. Nice high number, please. So what do we want? We want, want between eight and 10, don't we? Seven with the uh, plus two. That's another transit hazard. No, we didn't need that. Now, next in the rules, it says you can repair. So any damage markers on the B-25s we've got, plus that cracked turret, can be removed. Doesn't cost anything, but will count against us when we do the delay check. It's a minus one for every repair we do, if you like. But I think I'm going to take a chance and repair that cracked turret. I don't want to, to, you know, I don't want just to use two gunnery dice, but here, as you can see, repairs. It will count against us, but it's just the one. We can now put the carriers on the deck. There we are, you can place them however you wish. And uh, I've assigned the elite pilots again. You can do that in ever which way you like. But of course, we can't see their um, elite skills. There we are, not forgetting the cursed damage markers, which you can place on whichever B-25s you wish. And there will be opportunities to repair those as you go through the game. Next would be diplomacy checks. We could check Stalin because he's waiting in April, but there's no point, I don't think, because we have our landing sites in China. But again, up to you. And I'm pretty sure we're gonna to have to go and check now on our landing sites. Here we are back at the landing sites. One thing I forgot to do, of course, was to pick a landing beacon for Lishu. So we'll do that now. There we are. We can roll for more landing sites, but I think we're okay. This is the last month, but we can add a ground crew because we haven't got one to quail in there. And now add eight more Fuel. So we'll add two to each. Two, four, six, eight. 
There we are. And for the last time in this turn, because I think I mentioned it in the last video, event checks may still occur in the naval turn. But for now, let's see what happens this time. We've been pretty lucky. Oh, it's six minus one, five, me and my big mouth. Japanese attack. We have to now throw two more dice and see which of these it's attacking. Oh, that's a 10. Oh, sorry. Choo chow. We haven't got anything on it. If it was one of ours, we'd have got one of those and that would have been placed on the landing site. All the fuel, the ground crew, landing beacon would have been removed and that landing site would have been out the game. There we are. We were lucky. Okay, delay check. Delay check. First thing I'm gonna do though, is put Doolittle back in uh, February for the modifications, because if you remember, if he's in there, there is no delay modifier for this part of the turn. We place that in port, ready. And now we're gonna roll two dice, adjust with the modifiers, and see if there's any delay in leaving port to rendezvous with Nimitz. Here I put, just remind me, two diligence and one repair. Pop that there, we need a nice high roll. Nine, is that good enough? We mustn't get to two or less. We minus off the diligence, that's seven. Minus off the repairs, that's six. Modifications, we had Eight, but we can ignore that because of Doolittle. Was Nimitz briefed? Yes. That gets a plus five. So yes, that makes, I think, 11. So we're not delayed. If we were, we'd pop that on the task force. And that would have been a minus two to our die roll and that will stay on there until you are successful. So again, that's lucky. Now we have to do our first security check. So on the security track, the first thing we have to do is determine our secrecy value. That's the amount of dice we throw to try and pass a security check. And if you remember in March, when we had to pick the training site, we picked Eglin Field, and that gave us two little red dice. Also, we got some for our security measures. We got two for using quarantine. We got another one for the FBI and one for extra MPs. So that's six. We also get another plus one to our security value because we picked 18 B25s for the mission. If you pick 18 or less, that's another one to your secrecy value. So we're up to seven. The maximum you can have is eight, but there we are, happy with that. Now we determine the security risk. We didn't have any transit hazards that increased it. And when we did the crane check, we were lucky enough not to get any uh, increases in the security risk there. But now, diplomats, we get a plus four for each diplomat in the January column. And of course we had Stillwell, so that's four. Plus three for each diplomat marker in the February column. That was Nimitz, so that's seven. And plus two for any in March. We didn't have any in March. We had Thompson in April, but that, if you remember, had a plus zero. So that's seven. There we are. Oop. Plus one for any urgent 
and briefed markers and any leaders used. Well, we had Chiang there, and we had a couple of briefed markers, and an urgent. Another four. That's 11. Oop, come here. There we are. Something called Doolittle Spilled the Beans. Plus four if the morale marker is briefed side up. You remember I said this has a, a bad modification if we turn it up to increase the morale, but we didn't, so we get away with that one. Extra training. Yes, we did one of those for navigation. So that's another plus one. 12. Now there are some variable increases to the security risk. This can be a bit fiddly. If any of these variables apply, you have to throw two dice. But then increase the security risk by the amount indicated on a little table that's printed on the April part of the handout for this turn. I'll try and put that up on screen so you can have a look at it. And then you modify that sum by some modifiers. Of course, if one of the variables don't apply, it doesn't matter. Right, so the first one is Japanese attacked landing sites. Well, we were lucky. We didn't have any Japanese attacks, so we can ignore that. Next one is task force delayed. No, once again, lucky. Liberty. Well, yes. The training site marker that we plopped on Eglin Field, we turned that up the other way. So we've got that. So we're going to throw two dice. See if I can get that in there. There we are. And apply any modifiers. Five. So looking on that table for Liberty, we threw a five. It says plus three to the security risk, but modifiers. If the training happened at McLennan Field, minus two, no. Plus five if we use the FBI marker, which we did. Crikey. And minus three if we use the whole lot of the B-25s, 24 of them. So no. So that plus three gets adjusted to plus eight, I think. So that's now 20. Good grief. Next is Doolittle's telephone. Oh dear. We used it. This is the minus side to using the telephone. We throw two dice. That's a nine. And on the little table, a nine is a base of plus four, but can we do anything with it? Modifiers plus five if no one was briefed. No, we're lucky there. But we can have a minus two because we did have the security measure quarantined. So that is now another seven. 27. It's not good. And that <laughs> is it. One good thing is our alert level is still at zero, but we've got to throw 27 every time we do a security check. Although we do have seven dice, so it might not be too bad. Oh, nearly forgot. Now we've sorted out the secrecy value and we've determined the security risk. We have to make our first secrecy test. And this one is done under the little triangle, which means if we fail, there are no additional effects apart from uh, failing the security test. So we've got seven dice. And we've got to throw 27 or more. Oh, that doesn't look too bad. Is that 33? 15 and 4, 19, 
21 and 12 is 33. Yes, we've passed. However, we don't move up the failed secrecy test, but we move up the security risk, even if we pass it. We're now at 28. And that has brought us to the end of my back to front playthrough of the Doolittle Raid, designed by Jeremy White and published by GMT Games. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that, and I hope that this will be of use if you are thinking of getting this game. And who knows, maybe I've pointed out a couple of things you've missed if you already own this game. Best thing to do, I suggest, is to play the videos back to front from end to start, and you'll get a flow of the game. But I decided to do it this way because of the rules being set up with the last phase, if you like, first. If you have enjoyed it and you haven't done so already, it would be wonderful if you would consider subscribing. It really does help the channel, believe it or not. Push the like button of the video, the thumbs up, that really helps as well. Leave a comment and share. As always, a big thank you to those that have already subscribed. Thank you very much. And one last thing, if you want to support the channel a little bit further, well, now you can. You can buy the channel a coffee. It doesn't cost much. And those coffees go towards new content for the channel to upload. If you wish to check that out, I'll leave a link in the description and thank you. So, until next time, as always, you take care and goodbye.